Well, build my gallows and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die Hello everybody, welcome to Long Bangers, I'm Matty. Hello, how's it going mate? Uh, going alright mate, Hi, how are you? Mm, not bad, not bad. How was, uh, how was your day at the ladies game today? I was, I was at that this morning or this afternoon, or whenever it was, 10 past 1. Aye. Fucking mad kick, metal kick-off time. Why was that kick-off time, was that because of the TV? Must have been, because it was 2 o'clock printed on the ticket. Um, which I think, there was folk arriving sort of during the game, like, so I is think it? that people had can were, were planning on too. I don't know what the final attendance was. I've not seen it. I know they were trying to break the record today, which was eight thousand and something. Eight the road in November. I didn't look November. anywhere close to that. I didn't think. Didn't feel like it. <clears throat> a few minutes before kickoff, like lucky a couple of thousand in there, maybe three. Our, our end looked no bad in the end, but I I don't know what they would have got. But the gee, the thing is, the, the gee that many away because mm-hmm. even it was the same here. At East the East the road. It was like. And the strong opinion boys were saying, oh, there's like 14,000 expected and stuff. But that's just how many tickets they give away. Aye, not how many people turned up. Aye, 8,000 turned up, eh? So I think they'll be the same. They'll have gave 12,000 12, that said they gave away. But the lucky Eric and the lucky if there's a fucking third of that. There's a Aye. Aye. It's still a good attendance for women's football, and it's increasing the attendances now. But um, kind of, I don't know, I assume that's the way, way to go. Like you get away for free and then hopefully. Some stack. Yeah, and I, I think that's probably not a bad, um, not a bad model to follow. It's the one we used for, uh, for the podcast. <laughs> that's it. Uh-huh. Um, uh, what do you think of the, the the game itself? So actually, just to, to set some context, obviously we um, we have the sad news of Ron Gordon passing earlier in the in the week, um, and with no game this week, we thought we would just put out a short episode. We'll talk a wee bit about the women's game just now. Um, but actually, we're just going to kind of look back over Ron's time at Easter Road. Um, and then that'll be an extra time where we're going to talk about the, the loan market. Can kind you of move it on a, a, probably a bit more of an upbeat conversation? Um, Patrick McParland put a really good article out in the uh, evening news through the week as well, just about Hibs' use of loans and trying to sign them up and attitudes to them and everything. So we thought that would make the good basis for an episode. So if you're a subscriber, um, you'll get that after after this episode. Um, so one of the yeah, the women's games, so one each was the, the final score, but I'm lucky not to hold out for the, the win. Yeah, I thought it was a better team. Uh, it wasn't a very good game, actually. It was a bit quality. It wasn't very, very high. Um, only just kicking the ball at the park and that kind of stuff which frustrates the fucking life out of me even when I'm watching girls football and I would expect women's football to be way better than that um, I don't know if it's because it was a derby or not but uh, the quality wasn't great um, took the lead first half Mickey took her goal really. have you seen the goal in that? yeah, yeah it's a good, good, good finish yeah, yeah it was a good finish Um I had, had plenty of possession in that, but didn't really take many chances. There was a couple of crosses for corners and that, I think. But um, I thought we were the better side, and then they're fucking turning into their, their men's team. Eh? They're fucking <laughs> goal at the death, man, just a shake yeah, heater for a corner. But um, aye, it, was, it was disappointing in the end because it, it wasn't, it, it was, they'd done the penalties. Obviously, they lost the penalties for that stupid cup that they'd made up, but yeah. it was more. If they won the day, they would have jumped them in the league, and they were winning, and they should have won because they were the better team. But um, aye, I, I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't a great game. It wasn't a high standard. I thought Mickey. Mickey was good. Lockwood was good. Um, but other than that, the second half they looked fucking knackered. And then you go, "Why is he not bringing any subs on?" Um. And and then you go, I mean, we've only got fucking four subs as well. Yeah. Like we've never even filled, we've never even filled the bench. There's a must have injuries and um suspensions and and whatnot, and then not big squad in the first place. Um but to not make any, like you're thinking just like it just freshens it up a bit because they look fucked. Aye. Like with 15, 20 minutes to go. My wife said to me, they look knackered. Ken, it's like they, they look and they did. They just look like, and you we've got four, four play, outfield players on the bench. Get, get a couple of them on. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, he doesn't rate them. And one of them was just one of the new signings that, that came in and uh, 
January then. Well. It's one of these things, something just like a fresh pair of legs on is enough yeah. to sort of see you over the line because it gives everybody else a wee bit of energy and it's somebody else that can do a pick up a bit of the running. They don't have to be that great, eh? they just have to That's be it, to, to be uh, well in runners. All they need, that's what they need to do. They're running a lot and comfortable at one now. Like, I don't think the keeper really had any saves to make the day. Like, one for the range, yeah. Like, second half, it was like that long range. It's maybe for 25 yards out. Straight out. Aye. 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 Yeah. That's it. And there might have been another save she made as well. Right? But there, there was very little, very little she had to do in the whole game. And then the same for their keeper, though. You know, yeah. it wasn't like yours. Um, but we, we scored the goal. We were in control there. And, and then farted a bit with the ball just before the goal like the, 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 down in the left back area I know she's not normally a light a left back she's normally a right back but she passed it in the midfield midfield fucked a bit with it gave it to somebody else I mean just think do the Van Zanten bought the line man you know what I mean it's, it's 89 minutes 88 minutes here just like just Van Zanten it you know it, it was um, and, and I hate that but when you're running a lot of weight at Dencastle and, and you're ju- jumping in the league you, you're not fucking playing the ball in the midfield surely aye but um, but they were knackered so maybe their decision making was done because of that as well and it was just like get some sort of man just get why, do you go, why bother with them on the bench you only bring your own for injuries that's it so, I think I'd, uh, I'd seen uh, Dean Gibson saying after the game that he was happy to, to get the point because of the, the week that Hibs had had so I think they'd, they'd, they'd try to get some loan players in and not been able to do it and um, I think they'd struggle to get a Easy. team at the day so uh, well, they never started with four subs, so they yeah. had more players than they needed. Really, they needed eleven to get. Aye, fifteen, sixteen. In fact, one was a keeper, but the, so I they, they didn't fill the bench, but they had four subs. You could, and I don't know how many. I can't remember if it's. I don't know if they're allowed to make all five in women's football, I, and I, I'm, I'm sorry for the ignorance. I don't know, um, but they, they had fucking. They, they could have made three, four, four subs or three subs of three zero, mm. and. And, you can, and one of them was one of the January signings the, that came in, uh, Brooke Nunn. So it wasn't like you're going, oh, it's just like Burns on the bench or Aye. untried players. It's somebody has been in and about the first team since you came here in January. Um, it's weird. Just weird. Like, just get just freshen it up a bit. And, and you say, oh, I was happy with the draw. Like, can you be happy with the draw when you won the lot in the ninth minute? Can it be, yeah. Nah, can it be? Nah, not having it. So I was a bit disappointed, and then the penalties, uh, obviously, which is like even my daughter. My, my daughter's twelve. Is she? Went, Do we need to stay for the penalties? <laughs> like I, I've no, I've not even said to her it's a made up cup or anything. Like that. She just knows it, is it? She's like, the point. So I watched some of them in, and then like I was like, well, I'll have boat here now. We'll miss the traffic, and I'll no, I'll catch some of the rugby. So we didn't even see the missed one. No, didn't even wait. I think we left it. Four all or five all. Um, I we, we didn't see the last one. Just went fuck it, get out. Do you remember Hearts had the penalty shoot against Dunfermline? I think it was in the League Cup when they were already <laughs> in, and they had to go through <laughs> the penalties and they still lost it. There was like zero pressure on them at all. That's amazing. That line. I mean, that what everybody's going. Why are they doing this? Like, which I mean, that in the group chats or whatever at the time. It's like, why are they doing that? Why are they bothering? It was one of my favourite <laughs> moments. <laughs> So maybe the match yet? Aye. Um I'm a bit disappointed that they uh, they never took the opportunity to, to go above Hearts. I was quite surprised Hearts were above us in the, the first Aye. place. Like because Well, that's just but that's just the uh, historical bias because the women have generally been better. Now yeah. Hearts have Hearts have got a bit better. Hibs have just got a bit worse. Uh, and Aye. they're kind of meeting in the middle and they're, they're probably on a par with each other as as the league table shows as well. Because yeah. that's two draws that two games have played each other. Three points between them in the league, or two points, what it is. I think it's two because we were the jump. Oh, no, we were doing a problem on goal difference. So it's three points behind the league. Um, so it's close, but it's, like, that was the chance you go and you go above them. And then uh, it's only for fourth place, though. So can it's like it's a bit of fall off, and it's disappointing. Eh? They've they went professional, and it's their worst season of they've had in ever. I think it's one of these things that uh, they've gone professional at a time where other clubs have started ploughing loads of money into the Rangers and Celtic obviously spending a lot more hearts, spending a lot more. That's the book. I don't know if I don't know if hearts have went uh, I don't know if hearts have went uh, professional yet. I'm not sure. But the uh, so that was something to try to phone me. I don't know if that fucked up the on the iPad. No, no, I, we just um, had the ring, that's all. I um <laughs> I don't know if hearts have went professional yet. 
but the because we went a season or two after the the Glasgow teams, they managed to take a few of the, the good players that were the Hibs that might have stayed. I don't know if they would have. They might have stayed. We have been who Hibs were in women's yeah. football. They could have given them a full time contract, not to go to Rangers and. Then I might have made a, made a bit of a difference. I might not have, because it might have been a bit more money. But who knows? They, they missed the missed the boat away. Aye. Which probably takes us on to Ron Gordon, because it was Ron Gordon that made it happen. Whereas he wasn't there when the time was right, probably. Aye, it was one of the one of the things Ron was quite passionate about, wasn't it? About getting the women's team uh, integrated into the club and uh, up and running properly. So, um, yeah, sad news on... Uh, Tuesday, it was Tuesday afternoon when Hibs tweeted it uh, to say that Ron had passed away in the early hours of Tuesday morning, um, UK time. Uh, it was a bit of a surprise, Colin, wasn't it? Because we'd, we'd had obviously the letter that he'd put out, an open letter to the, the support on the website. Was that about a month before it? And, it was a lot. I didn't feel even a month. I felt like a couple of weeks. And uh, if I'm totally honest, and I don't know if this is just like sort of again, you talk about bias and everything. Do you think like a wealthy guy getting treatment in America is going to be getting the best of the, uh, the treatment and everything? And the way that I read the um, that initial letter was sort of say like he's, he's no well he's getting treatment, but he's, he'll be all right. It's kind of how I had uh, mm-hmm. how I'd imagined it going, and then obviously it must have been much worse than than had been reflected in that letter because it was a shock yeah. when when the news came through. It's not often you get, you get like news. Do you know when you're not personally attached yeah. to somebody, you get news like that, and it kind of stops you in your your tracks. I it, no, no, it was one of them because um, obviously the phone started going mad, and I phoned my I phoned my brother to because he had the message that I never even know yet, and he went, what, "What's happened? So my phone's just been fucking daft in the last five minutes," and it was because everybody was so surprised that probably partly because. There's no secrets in uh, football anymore, but that was clearly all it wasn't really a secret. It was a secret. There were rumours that he wasn't well. Mm-hmm. Then he came out and addressed the rumours and went, eh, "Hopefully, be back soon and all that." And that that didn't set that that set the expectations as ah, he's got it. He's getting better. He's, he's on the mend. So then he do that. It, it was a surprise for everybody. I think okay, so. Um, and ah, it wasn't obviously it wasn't expected. I think it was obviously a quick must have been a quick one. Eh? Pancreatic or something like that, but I don't know if that's true. But the, the, the you know, it's one of the ones that just go through you. But because he's only well, he's younger than my mum and dad, like so he's only 60. Was he 68 or something? 68, I think, he's yeah. Not, he's not old in today's terms, so I mm-hmm. um, so yeah, no, it was uh, disappointing because well, we've got to go on what he's been through, what he's done, what he's done with Hibs and that. I know people have disagreed with some of the stuff, but he was definitely ambitious for the club, mm-hmm. and hopefully, hopefully, the family. I'll, I'll see that through. Yeah, I think that was that was part of the reason for putting the message out when they did was to say that the the plans were for the family can still be um, invested in the in the club. You know, say like uh, invested in inverted commas, not necessarily the financial investment, but certainly the the um, emotional investment and and the the eagerness to kind of keep to finish off that work or, or progress it that it started. Uh, what what do you think of it? Ron, do you get your first impressions of when he, when he came on board, Colin? I liked his enthusiasm. I did I did always wonder, like, what, what is he doing it for? Like, I, I, I did uh, still, like, to, to, you know, till last Tuesday, I did think, well, what is he? What? Why? Um, but I, I liked the enthusiasm. I liked to be, uh, he, he, he did have ambitious plans and, like, doubling wages and, or the wage bill, or, you know, yeah. all that stuff. And, it, it, and, and he'd done stuff that he said he would do, with the big screens in, again, it's more like moaning about, but, you know, like the, the big screens, the hospitality, the corporate side, he was getting that all right, he was getting that all in place. Um, so I liked the, I liked the enthusiasm, I liked the do what he says he would do. So in nature, mm-hmm. yeah. but I did wonder, like, why? I always thought he... There was like a comparison to be made with Fergus McCann. I always saw that for, for his motives for, for buying the club. Somebody who wanted to own a football club, was passionate about football, not necessarily passionate about Hibs, although I think it's evident that he was passionate about Hibs once he took taken over and got himself embedded in the in the club. I think he, you know, very, very clearly was passionate about Hibs. Um but I always thought it was somebody who thought they could get value for money out of it, you know, like make an investment. 
and I think he saw Hibs as an investment to do something that he wanted to do and still make money on the back of it. Like Fergus McCann did at Celtic, where he, he picked up a club that was kind of crumbling, really, wasn't it? Uh, and, and turned it around. Well, bust. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure Fergus McCann walked away something like a 10, 10 million pound profit or something that, that, that he picked up yeah. on it. Um, it was the first AGM that I attended that, uh, after Ron had taken over, but I was pretty much sold on what he wanted to do. I had that ske- uh, scepticism at the start as well, like why is he wanting Hibs? Yeah. Um, there was a thing about Julie Hitt, he'd had that um, endorsement from Sir Tom Farmer and Rod Peachy, where they'd sort of said, well, we wouldn't just sell it to anybody. And I think there was always a wee bit of reassurance there because I, I genuinely believed that. I didn't think that they would have just sold to a, like a Romanoff type or, or a cowboy. Yeah. It, it was really that first AGM where they laid out the plans. And obviously, did they came COVID when it was about to hit or anything, but um, there was just, I remember coming on and recording the podcast after it and being buzzing about it as like pretty much everything. If I was writing a manifesto for how I wanted to run a football club and grow it, that would have been it almost word for word. Do you know, like the stuff that he picked out, yeah. the, the stuff that folk don't see is, is valuable, like the Greenies Club in Scotland, that, that people will still sneer at. Things like that are important in businesses and society now. Like it makes a difference. No for not for everybody, because some folk would just say, well, we just want to have a winning team on the pitch, and really that's all we, we really care about. But to have that sort of sustainable growth and get other people on board as sponsors and yeah. uh, to attract folk who might not be that interested in football, but maybe are looking for a club to attach to, things like that are, are quite important. Um, and like you said, the delivering on stuff was, was good, because really you look at Hibs now, and not everybody will agree, but I think the club's in a better condition than when he picked it up, would, would you say? Well, it seems to be on that. I don't know where we like, off the field to be talking. Mm-hmm. So off the yeah, field, yeah, I yeah. would think, yeah, yeah well, there's more money coming in. Mm-hmm. There's more sponsorship, there's more money coming in, the hospitality's improved. We've got those big screens up, all the fancy boards going round it. Um, they're tidying the stadium up as they go. Like obviously the famous five was going to be next because that got left as a an absolute shit shit heap. Yeah. Um, by all accounts. Um and getting probably more hospitality in there because there's demand for it. You know, like you see the Albion Bar sold out waiting list to put an Aryan in there. Um, for example, as well as as well as other stuff. So they've got all that on the right the right path and the team is turning round. Like we, we, I, I can't remember we were we when we came in in the league. So, so off on the pack. Ah, well, his, 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 his first season, he finished third. So I can't remember where we were mm-hmm. when when he came in. In fact, we would have been struggling because one of the first things he did was uh, Heckenbottom got sacked, wasn't it? And they they, they brought in uh, Jack Ross. Is that that's right? Order, that? Isn't it? I don't know, mate. I don't know. I'm sure Jack. Oh, what the hell? But you've seen before COVID because he put the plans out before COVID, didn't he? Yeah. So we we lost the. Was it the cup final with Celtic? Or was it a cup semi final? Cup final, the uh, the heck and bottom lost. Quarter final at the East Third. Aye. No, the no, one, no, no, no. The one at Hampton. Oh, the one at Hampton. Oh, the one at Hampton. Aye. <laughs> Which so was one final, the League Cup semi final. Aye, League Cup semi final. We lost that. It was a bit of a sore one, and heck and bottom left. And we obviously weren't doing that great. That you you seen a manager going. Jack Ross came in. The first season, you would have to say, right. Mm-hmm. So he's got a third place finish and. Two cup finals, cup semi final, cup final. final. Yeah. yeah, but obviously we never won the cup, and that was like a sort of black mark. But I didn't really think you could hold that against the the owner. Um, so it started off promising, and then obviously COVID knocked all the plans. And Bendy got criticism for a lot of uh, places for investing in the team during COVID, like we signed this bit, for example, and you had the the press all sort of. Because they hammered us on the youth team and all stuff and all that, eh? Aye. Who can spend money on your first team when you're not spending on your youth team and stuff like that? Aye, and I think we'd made, we'd furloughed people and stuff like that, and there's maybe some redundancies, and they said, well, aye, how can you do that? And obviously, it was a strange argument. So, your main product, it'd be like saying to a supermarket, you can't replenish your stocks because. Can, you're, yeah, you're, you're cutting a different line somewhere else or whatever it is I breaks it um, I thought it made difficult decisions it didn't always get them right and I think that's 
like I always think when you do a, a have a conversation like this just shortly after someone's passed, it's very easy to sort of put them up on a pedestal and forget to mention or or just omit all the things you, that weren't quite right. So it wasn't like it was at a perfect time. Uh, I mean, the, the, the on-field stuff went wrong with the transfers, etc. that we, we spoke about as well, didn't we? Yeah. And uh, I, I mean, there was also the, the kind of the flack he got for having his son Ian in place well, as, a, as a head of the crew. That's the biggest thing that's still kind of there, eh? But then, I mean, I, I flippantly said at the time, like, he's not going to be here forever. He's tr- mm-hmm. trimming his laddie up, right? No realising that fucking 18 months or, or less maybe even that, yeah. on is, is required. So hopefully he's had enough time in the fucking role to be able to make decisions that I suspect he maybe is, hasn't he? Um, but he's now, I suppose, the owner, eh? Yeah, I mean, well, I suppose it still will be kind of it still will be seen how that will that will transpire. But I suppose you'll have like a good idea of the uh, the challenges that they face because the most important part really are the club's success is the recruitment. If you get the recruitment right, then you've you got yeah. you give yourself a chance. And he's been right on the coal face of it. So if he moves to a more senior role and the signing off the checks, is maybe you might find that he's a bit more open to sort of yeah. understanding why you might need to spend a bit more. You never know. I mean, that's just uh, yeah. that's just speculation. Um, that was the that was the one thing that put a lot of people against it. Was not, and, and I, I hate, hesitate to use the word, but there was the sneaky way in which to put them in the role on the website, but didn't publicise it, and then just change the website and stuff rather than actually saying, you know, what I mean, aye. like they knew this is not dodgy. This is just folk kind of got like this. Aye, we're on the dodgy ground rather than a dodgy thing. You know what I mean? Because Actually, if you just explain that, like, I'm fucking 67. Like, um, I'm not here forever. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That folk might have went, I ah, know, well, it's true, eh? He does the uh, succession plan and all that kind of stuff. But obviously, maybe, as I said, not with the time frames in, in mind, I guess. But, um, aye, that, that was the... And, and that's then being like... Can, it's like a vicious circle on that one. Every time we don't sign a centre-half in the transfer window... We keep coming back to that one. Aye. And his laddie's in charge of the sand. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, fuck his laddie. You know, and it's, like, it's that kind of, we kind of get out of, the, out of that rut. Aye. Um, and, and it's caused a lot of, that's probably, that's probably one of his worst decisions. Mm-hmm. Is maybe not making his son that job. Possibly not is, but actually the way they communicated it and the way they done it is yeah. probably the worst thing, the worst the way Worst decision he made, and he was he was fiercely defensive of it as he was with a lot of stuff like that because you remember we had them on the uh, the, the Zoom call with the, the other podcasts, um, yeah. and he was fe- yeah fiercely defensive of, of, of pretty much any of the criticism. There's some stuff he held mm-hmm. his hands up to him, and yeah, in retrospect, maybe we'd have done that different. The the Jack Ross sacking was one that he expressed sort of regrets, the right word for it, but but maybe like on reflection he would have. Um, given Jack a bit longer, um, and Sean Maloney, I think he was quick to act on the Maloney one, and he owned that as well. He sort of said, "Well, we thought it was the right thing to do, but evidently it wasn't." Um, but when we were when we were critical, which as we were on that call, he he bristled. You know, he was passionate in his defence of, of, of what was going on at the club. He pointed to the um, yeah. the off field success and the commercial success and. Um, even some of the on-field stuff. I mean, he, he rattled off a few players that, that he thought had been uh, good signings, and again, not everybody on that call agreed at, at that moment in time. But um, yeah. Yeah. what I liked about that though was like, so it's fine. It's fine to disagree. Like we've spoken about this before. It's like so he disagrees. He's always defensive or whatever it was, or both. Um, but it did make you think. I had a day off that day. I was on holiday that day, and I asked the first question, didn't I, on the. The signings, yeah, and, and he threw it back at me, and I, had, I almost had to switch into like work mode um, to go fuck me. He's challenging my back. It wasn't just like a ask a question, so you had to then like I go into what I, what I call work mode or what I, like what a journalist does all the time. But I'm not being I'm not saying I'm a journalist, but in my work, I have meetings like that to get a bit dodgy and like fucking you're firing stuff back and forth at each other. And I was like, fuck's sake, I was just pottering about the day. Then fuck off, I'm gonna just dial in. <laughs> And uh, but I like that he treated us with that kind of 
well, I was going to say respect, but other people might not call it respect because he was. But I, I would see that as a like it's a, it's a val it's a valid question. I'm going to fucking hit you back with my response. Not just he wasn't just playing with us. As, speak to these fuckers at the podcast. Get that done. That's that pop. Um, you know, it was like a a proper um, challenge back. Now there wasn't enough time like for us to get into it. Like and one of the reasons we we're on the last one, you know, like because because of, of the format, but. It, it was it was good that the way he was uh, willing to to say yeah I didn't agree with you because that's fine that's good I, I did that a lot and and I kind of respect him for that <laughs> disagree with his answer right but um, that was his point of view so good but it was it was that uh, I was the fan engagement I suppose from our point of view was uh, was good yeah um, and I think the um, like the the, the for reading stuff online, the people's interactions with him tend to kind of reflect that he was very open and honest and approachable and quite happy to talk Hibs to uh, to people. I always thought he was quite open with, with his intentions as well, although there was, you know, there was always a kind of a, a, a sort of sceptical yeah. group amongst the, I suppose not just the Hibs support, but any any fan base has them that, where they, they kind of view everybody as, as being potentially evil or whatever, and you had the, the, the Ron the Con stuff, which I never really subscribed to. I always thought yeah. If you listen to what he said, he told you what he was doing, um, and then in, invariably sort of followed it up. He also said like the, the thing we're kicking off the review of Scottish football. So I think he saw potential not just in Hibs but actually in in Scottish football in general. And it's unusual for somebody to come in and and be prepared to disrupt the status quo like that. Yeah, I was just at the last night because he was on about the, the alcohol bans and all that as well, wasn't he? Mm. Um, kind of banging against a closed door, though, really. Aye. Uh, well, uh, but it was good that he was willing to, to try it. Yeah. Hopefully, we carry on. But I don't know if we've got anybody there now that's got that. I was going to say clout or gravitas or you know what I mean, like, that, that, that he had. Well, I mean, I suppose he kicked off the Deloitte review. Uh, I know Dave Cormack at Aberdeen was like a big champion of that as well. There was a few clubs involved. And... He's ill as well, eh? He's ill <clears> enough. He is, aye. aye. Saw that in, in, earlier last week I think it was um, well what would you remember Ron Gordon for then Colin just to, to kind of look to wrap up what, what do you think he'll be remembered for what would you remember him for um, I, I guess the the uh, hopefully setting the foundations in place the spending more money the accumulate to speculate to accumulate mm -hmm. mo model or more of that that will see us. That will see us progress into the, the third best team in the country. Um, <clears throat> but at the moment, you know, that's that's just a hope, isn't it? But hopefully, that's it because he has he has turned that. We had a lot of fans that would argue. <laughs> well, I said we, we have a lot of fans that argue, but we, we would have a lot of fans, and specifically would argue about the spending a pound less than you bring in model is the right way to go. And I think he sees it as like no. That isn't it, and hopefully that's the that, that's the turning point that we see that actually helps us to 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 progress and to bigger and better things. Aye, and I, I would agree with that. I think you look at that. There's a tangible stuff that you 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 can point to as as being his sort of legacy at the club, which are the stadium improvements, the stuff that's been done at, at the training centre. Even and it's it's like a small thing, but we were up at the training centre what two weeks or three weeks ago to talk to Steve Keane. Yeah. And uh, the first thing that we clocked when we went in was do we wait in room but the reception had been turned into an office. So actually the training centre inside had been changed about. It was different, they spent a bit of money on doing these things for the presumably for the betterment of the of the, of the team. And I think Ron was prepared to do that and, and prepared to invest money in the, the right places if he thought there was value for it. Um yeah. Yeah, it's that, that sort of cultural shift. It, it was good to have somebody who wasn't just happy with what we had and actually was like, well, come on, let's, let's have a bit of balls about us and go and try and be better. Let's try and get more money and let's try and spend a bit more money. Let's try and get better players and actually yeah. do something to uh, to make a mark. And it's just a shame. I think, you know, obviously it's tragic that, that uh, he's, he's passed away. It's a shame that he won't be around to, uh, to see it. But I think... And it's obviously early to say because you don't know how the next few years will pan out, but I, I would think that, that probably at some point we'll pull it back in the club. We'll have quite a lot to be thankful to him for. Mm. Yeah, hopefully. 
Aye. Um, so sad, sad news, and um, our well, from you know for the podcast, our deepest condolences go out to to Ron's family in particular, fam, uh, and the the wider Hibs family who, who are all impacted by it. Um, that's us out of time for uh, the episode tonight, Colin. Um, we're just going to go and talk, as I said at the start of the, the episode, on a slightly lighter note, um, sort of reviewing our experiences with loans, uh, not our personal ones with, with loans, but the clubs with the loan players. Um, and, you know, out of the loans we've got just now, who, who would we be investing money in to try and keep, etc. Uh, so if you want to listen to that, just uh, click on our profile on our Twitter um, and you can subscribe £3 a month and you'll get all our extra content. In the meantime, thanks very much for listening and we'll see you next time. When they trailed me down when I broke free I drank all the whiskey in Tennessee